Typically, there are a number of team members to care for a patient who is part of an AML healthcare team. Um, absolutely. We definitely cannot work uh, on our own. Our team uh, is very large and it's because these patients require a lot of support. So at a bare minimum, a healthcare team will include at least one physician um, or an oncologist. The AML healthcare team might also include a second oncologist that could be a bone marrow transplant doctor. Um, other members that are very critical include having uh, a mid-leveler available that's a physician assistant or nurse practitioner, often an oncologist who runs a busy practice practice who takes care of patients that could be very sick, like AML, uh, they work in partnership with a uh, often very talented physician assistants and nurse practitioners. I know I do. Um, in addition to that, um, I'm at an academic center, so I'm super fortunate. I have really uh, amazing uh, and very smart hematology oncology fellows and residents uh, that also uh, follow to learn how to take care of patients. But we also, in the background that patients don't see, we have uh, a pharmacist that helps us with making sure that drugs are prescribed uh, correctly. They often call the patients with oral therapies to follow up. We have like financial resource teams that help patients to link them to like LLS for support for um, bills that might come up or uh, transportation or linking them up to other services that can help to defray or reduce costs. So the healthcare team is quite extensive, but in terms of those that are patient facing, it's primarily the MD and their uh, mid-leveler. Some teams operate also with an, um, uh, a nurse as well or a nurse care coordinator. That's pretty common too. And that person helps to uh, not only schedule, but also to answer pages or phone calls from patients if the medical team is not doing that. What about um, a social worker or a psychologist? Somebody oh, like yes, yes. So um, absolutely. So uh, every patient can be offered, if needed, uh, access to an inpatient or outpatient social worker. Often if my patients are admitted, we have them see a social worker because uh, that's uh, fairly seamless. Um, but otherwise, for outpatient, if we identify any particular needs or there's an interest, we'll link them up with the social worker. Uh, that go that's the same that goes for physical therapy or nutritionists or those other ancillary services that could be really critical when patients are getting started. Mm -hmm.